Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Illustrate expressions with rational exponents. Write expressions with rational exponents as radicals and vice versa. And simplify expressions with rational exponents. Look at the following expressions. What do you notice with their exponents? One third, one half, negative one half, two thirds. These are called rational numbers. Rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as a quotient of two integers, commonly known as fractions. So here is law number 9, rational exponent. I already discussed law number 1 to number 8 in my previous lesson, Exponents Part 1. Rational exponent states that a raised to m over n is equal to the nth root of a raised to m or the quantity nth root of a raised to m. The expression nth root of a raised to m is called the radical. This is the radical symbol and a raised to m, the one inside the radical symbol, is what we call the radicand while n is the index or root of the radical. Example, 5 raised to 3 over 2. This can be expressed as the square root of 5 cubed. So the numerator here becomes the exponent here, and the denominator here becomes the index or the root of the radical. Or 5 raised to 3 over 2 can also be expressed as the quantity of the square root of 5 raised to the third power. Still, the denominator becomes the index or the root, while the numerator becomes the exponent. Relationship between radicals and rational exponents. Let A be a real number while M and N are positive integers. I have here three columns, element, exponential form, and radical form. The element A, which is the base in exponential form, becomes the radicand in radical form. The element M, which is the numerator in exponential form, becomes the exponent in the radical form. While the element n, which is the denominator in the exponential form, becomes the index or root in the radical form. We have three conditions. Number one, rational exponent 1 over n, such as a is raised to 1 over n. So again, the denominator becomes the index or the root, so we have the nth root of a. Next one, rational exponent m over n, such as a is raised to m over n. So we can express this as quantity a raised to m raised to 1 over n. Applying power of a power, when we multiply the exponents, this will become n over n such as this one. This is now the denominator, so this will become the index or root of the radical. So we can express this as the nth root of a raised to m, such as this one. Or we can also express a raised to m over n as this one. Quantity a raised to 1 over n raised to m. Again, applying power of a power, when we multiply these exponents, this will become m over n, like this one. So, this is the denominator, so this will become the root, so this is the nth root of a raised to m, such as this one. And last one, when we have a negative rational exponent, such as a raised to the negative of m over n. So what do we do again to make the negative exponent positive? We bring the whole expression down. So this will become 1 over a raised to m over n. Let us convert the following expressions. First, let us convert the following to radical form. Number 1, c raised to 1 third. 3 here is the denominator, so this will become the index. So this is equivalent to cube root of c. We do not write any more 1 as exponent in the radicand. Number 2, z raised to 1 half. So 2 is the index of the radical. So this is equal to the square root of z. Notice that 2 is not written here. If there is no number written here, it is understood that the index is equal to 2. Next one, 8 raised to 5 over 2. So this is equal to the square root of 8 to the fifth power. Nothing is written here. It is understood that the root is equal to 2. We can also express this as the quantity is square root of 8 raised to the fifth 
power. Next one, quantity 3b minus 2 raised to 4 over 5. So this will become the index and this will become the exponent. So this is equal to the fifth root of quantity 3b minus 2 raised to 4. Or we can also express this as quantity fifth root of 3b minus 2 raised to 4. Last one, quantity 5 over 16 raised to 6 over 7. 7 will become the index and 6 will become the exponent. So this is equivalent to 7th root of quantity 5 over 16 raised to the 6th power. Notice that this is enclosed in a parenthesis because both 5 and 16 are raised to the 6th power. We can also express this as the quantity 7th root of 5 over 16 raised to the 6th power. This time, let us convert the following to exponential form. Number 1, 7th root of k. 7 is the index, so this will become the denominator of the exponent. And since there is no number written here, it is understood that the exponent of k is 1. So this is equal to k raised to 1 over 7. Next one is square root of x. Since there is no root written, understood that the root is equal to 2. So this is equal to x raised to 1 half. Next one, fifth root of 64. So this will become the denominator of the exponent. So this is equivalent to 64 raised to 1 over 5. Number 4, quantity 4th root of 16 raised to 3. The index will become the denominator and this one will become the numerator. So this is equal to 16 raised to 3 fourths. Last one, cube root of m to the fifth power. So this one will become the denominator and this one will become the numerator. So m raised to 5 over 3. This time, let us evaluate the following. Number 1, 81 raised to 1 half. Since the denominator here is 2, I'm going to express 81 as a power whose exponent is also 2. And 81 is equal to 9 squared. So this is equivalent to quantity 9 squared raised to 1 half. This matter, I can cancel out 2. So I have 9 raised to 1 and this is equal to 9. Number 2, 27 raised to 1 third. Since this is 3, I'm going to express 27 as a power whose exponent is also 3. And 27 is equal to 3 cubed. So this is equivalent to quantity 3 cubed raised to 1 third. I can now cancel 3. So I have 3 raised to the first power. And this is also equal to 3. Number 3, 125 raised to 2 thirds. Since this is 3, I'm going to express 125 as a power whose exponent is 3. And 125 is equal to 5 cubed. So this is equivalent to quantity 5 cubed raised to 2 thirds. So 3 and 3 will cancel out and I have 5 squared, which is equal to 25. Number 4, quantity negative 8 raised to 4 thirds. Since this is 3, I'm going to express 8 as a power whose exponent is 3. And 8 is equivalent to 2 cubed. So this is equal to quantity negative 2 cubed raised to 4 thirds. Remember, when you have a negative number raised to an add exponent, that will give you a negative answer. So this one is correct. So I can now cancel out 3. So I have quantity negative 2 raised to the 4th power. 2 to the 4th power is 16. Negative raised to an even exponent will give me a positive answer. So the final answer is positive 16. Let us continue. Number 5, quantity negative 64 raised to 3 over 2. If I am going to express 64 as 8 squared, this will be quantity negative 8 squared raised to 3 over 2. Before I continue further, I'll make sure first that my power is correct. Negative 8 raised to the second power will give me positive 64, not negative 64, meaning 
This is incorrect, since there is no negative number that when raised to an even exponent will give me a negative answer, therefore, there is no real number solution to this problem. Number 6, quantity 5 over 256 raised to 1 fourth. Since I have 4 here, I'm going to express 256 as 4 to the 4th power. And then I'll distribute the exponent, and I can cancel out 4 here. So I have 5 raised to 1 fourth over 4 raised to 1. 4 raised to 1 is still 4. This is the denominator, so this will become the index. So my final answer will be 4 root of 5 over 4. Let us continue. Number 7, quantity 5m to the 4th raised to 4 over 7. Let us distribute the exponent. This will become 5 raised to 4 over 7 times m raised to 16 over 7. This is 16 because 4 times 4 is equal to 16. The denominators are both 7. This will become our index. So this will be 7th root of 5 to the 4th times m to the 16th power. 5 to the 4th is 625, so we have 7th root of 625, m to the 16th power. Number 8, p raised to 3 fourths times p raised to 9 fourths, we have the same base. Let's copy p and then add the exponents. 3 plus 9 is 12, so we have p raised to 12 over 4. And 12 divided by 4 is 3, so we have p cubed. Next one, number 9, q raised to 4 over 5 times q raised to 3 fourths. Same base, let us copy the base, q, and then add the exponents. Since our denominators are not the same, we have to determine the LCD. And the LCD of 5 and 4 is 20. So we have 20 divided by 5 is 4 times 4, 16. Copy plus, 20 divided by 4 is 5 times 3 is 15. 16 plus 15 is 31, so we have Q raised to 31 over 20. 20 will become our index and 31 will become the exponent. So we have 20 at root of Q raised to 31. Next, d raised to 5 over 6 divided by d raised to 3 over 6. We have the same base. Let's copy the base d. And then since this is division, let us subtract the exponents. So we have the same denominator like terms. We can simply subtract the numerators. 5 minus 3 is 2. So we have d raised to 2 over 6. And 2 over 6 is 1 third. So we have d raised to 1 third. Let's convert this into radical form. This will become cube root of d. Now it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer number one. Let us distribute the exponent. So this will become 3 raised to 2 thirds times x raised to 8 thirds. 4 times 2 is equal to 8. So 3 will become our index. So this will become the cube root of 3 squared times x to the 8th power. 3 squared is equal to 9. So we have cube root of 9 x to the 8th power. Number 2, let us copy the same base b and then add the exponents. They are similar fractions. We can simply add the numerators. 2 plus 5 is 7, so we have b raised to 7 over 3. This will become our index, so our answer will be cube root of b to the 7th power or quantity cube root of b raised to 7. Number 3, let us multiply first the constants. 4 times 3 is 12. And then let's copy the base n and then add the exponent. So this will become 12n raised to 5 over 2 plus 7 over 2. Again, similar fractions. Let us add the numerators. 5 plus 7 is 12. So we have 12n raised to 12 over 2. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. Therefore, we have 12n raised to the 6th 
power. Number 4, let us distribute the exponents. 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 2 is 10. So we have 4 raised to 6 over 4 times c raised to 10 over 4. 4 here will become our index. So we have 4th root of 4 to the 6 times c to the 10th power. 4 to the 6 is 4096. Therefore, we have 4th root of 4096 c to the 10th power power. Next, number 5, we have here cube root of 125 over 64. Let us convert this first into exponential form. And then I'll express 125 as 5 cube and 64 as 4 cube. So 3 and 3 will cancel out as well as here in the denominator. So I have 5 raised to the first power, which is 5, over 4 raised to the first power, which is 4. So final answer is 5 over 4. Gets?